What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Hit Song Breakdown Podcast. My name is Lenny Giuliano, and uh, we're going to talk all about hit song writing techniques, hit song production techniques that are going to help 10x your songs, techniques that 99% of songwriters don't know exist, never knew existed, techniques that are going to help you master your craft, write better melodies, produce better songs. And all of these techniques are pulled straight from hit songs. And they're not just used here and there, they're consistently used throughout hit songs that are happening today and from 50 years ago. Let's dive right in. The first song I want to jump into uh, that we're going to cover and learn some stuff from is the uh, current hit song called Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift. And I've posted a little bit about this song. There's a, there's a lot of stuff going on that's really valuable. But the technique that I want to touch on today is called rhythmic repetition. And if you don't know what that is, um, it's very simple, but it's a very effective technique that some of the top songwriters in the world are using. And I say some of, uh, honestly, the most elite songwriters and producers in the world are using this technique, okay? And the way you accomplish it is you very simply take rhythms from one section, particularly your melody, right? So rhythms in your melody from, let's say your verse, and you want to repeat those rhythms from that verse to the melody in your chorus. Simple as that. And you can also do it from your pre-chorus to your bridge or your synth line. Generally, you don't want to repeat section to section. You want to kind of skip a section. It helps play off of this subtle familiarity trick that's going on in the brain with, for the listener. But that is what you'll see 99% of the time is skipping a section, going from the verse to the chorus or from, uh, let's say, the intro to the pre or the pre to the bridge, repeating these rhythms from your melodies in that section to another section, all right? And I, as I mentioned the elite songwriters in the world, Max Martin, Taylor Swift, Louis Bell, the MXM crew, everybody who is anybody in the songwriting community who has hit after hit after hit is using this technique. I want to say Max is the godfather of this because he's been doing this for a long, long time, um, but it's something that you should be doing religiously in your songs. And I would argue probably every song that you write, you should be using this technique. Let's go over the song. I'm going to play the song for you. I'm going to show you where these rhythms are happening from the verse to the chorus. And so the lyrics that we're going to be looking at for the verse are going to be, you know that I caught it. And then the other lines, you know that I bought it. Okay. It's right here in the verse. I'm going to play straight from the intro. There you go. you know that I caught it. So if we focus on the rhythm of that line, it's a down, up, up, down, down, up. And that's a rhythm pattern we talk about sometimes on social media. But that's a rhythm pattern that you can use in your melodies. It's very frequently used in hit songs. Down, up, up, down, down, up. And she repeats it on, you know that I bought it. Down, up, up, down, down, up. You know that I bought it. And so you've got those two rhythms in the verse happening, okay? And what she does is she takes those rhythms, exactly how they're saying in the verse, and she repeats them in the chorus, all right? So let's fast forward to the chorus. Okay, so the line is going to be the shape of your body and the feeling I've got it. So let's focus on the shape of your body. You ready? At the very beginning. the shape of your body, down, up, up, down, down, up. Same rhythm we heard in the verse. And then she does it again, the feeling I've got it. The feeling I've got it. Down, up, up, down, down, up. Imagine you're gritting the melody in a DAW, okay? And so you're just gritting on there. Honestly, I encourage you to try and grit it in your DAW. And you can visually see exactly what's happening with the rhythm. And so what you simply have is a down, up, up, down, down, up for all those rhythms. She's using it in the verse, and then repeating it in the chorus. And again, this is something that you should be doing religiously in most, if not all of your songs. So, and this is happening, like I said, uh, in tons of other songs by Taylor, by Max. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a bunch of reels on this on Instagram and TikTok. So check those out. Um, and I think I have other hit song examples where you can check out the timestamps even of when they're happening and what hit song is, is using this. So, okay, so let's jump into our next section. Uh, this is where I want to talk about the science of hit songs. And so I always, I'm, I'm a big advocator of, you know, just because a hit song is using a technique, that doesn't necessarily mean that we should be using that technique. I, I always want to go back to the root. If we see a hit song technique happening over and over again in lots of different hit songs, why is that technique working so well 
for the listener, right? Why is it showing up so often? And so what I did in my studies um, is I went to the top musicologists in the world and I, I went to them and said, okay, so what's the foundation of hit songs? Which they talk a lot about uh, dopamine as the foundation. When certain things are happening in hit songs, dopamine is being produced if, if those things techniques in the hit songs are, are, are working for the listener. And so then the question is, okay, how do we produce dopamine in the listener's brain, either evolutionarily or with hit song techniques or, or essentially both? One of the things that these musicologists have discovered is what they call prediction errors. And Peter Voos is kind of the pioneer behind prediction errors, right? And so prediction errors can help cause dopamine in the listener's brain over and over and over again. And so you're asking, what are prediction errors? Well, prediction errors deal primarily with syncopation and polyrhythm. When a listener, or even when, when we're listening to music, generally what happens is the brain is latching on to a certain rhythm, right? Which is most of the time is, is, is the downbeats of the song. We're tapping our foot, we're snapping our fingers, we're bobbing our head. Usually it's, if it's four on the floor or a four, four time, we're bobbing our head to that time. That's what we generally do when we're listening to music. So while we're counting on these downbeats, when we introduce syncopation, they're causing prediction errors because of one specific idea, okay? And that idea is the face vase dilemma. And so I'm sure you've seen the famous picture where you've got a, a vase or a vase in the middle, but then you've got these two faces on the sides, the left and the right. And so what Peter Voos teaches is that when we're looking at this picture, the brain can only focus on either the vase or the faces. We can't focus on both at the same time. And so he, he translates that to music and particularly with these prediction errors. When we're counting on those downbeats and we have syncopation on top of those downbeats, right? Our brain can't focus on both at the same time. We can only focus on either the downbeats or the syncopation. Exactly like what he teaches with the, with the Voss and the face dilemma. And so when we're focusing on these downbeats, for example, and we introduce syncopation, it causes these prediction errors. By implementing these prediction errors, it causes dopamine in the brain. What Peter teaches is, okay, so if we know the prediction errors cause dopamine in the brain, how frequently should we have prediction errors? Like, how simple can we have a song where it's just downbeats, for example? Or how complicated can we have a song where it's only syncopation, right? Where is the most amount of dopamine and pleasure emitted from this balance between downbeats and syncopation? And so what they found in their studies was they've got this sweet spot right in the middle where there's a perfect balance between the two, where there's not too many uh, downbeats and there's not too many syncopated notes. It's a perfect balance right in the middle. So that essentially teaches us, okay, if we're going to have the optimal amount of pleasure and dopamine in the listener's brain rhythmically, then we have to have a balance, a perfect balance between downbeats and upbeats. We have to get as close as we can to that balance where we're not having just rapid fire syncopation or just a boring song full of downbeats, right? There has to be a perfect merge and balance between the two. And so based off of those findings, right, I want to go back to Max Martin. He, he does this in every single song perfectly. I really think that one of the biggest things that Max can teach us besides the rhythm patterns or the pitch patterns or even lyrical content or, or production is he has a perfect sense of balance, um, which I'd never really appreciated until a few years into my studies where Max takes that, that balance between downbeats and, and syncopation and he, and he does it perfectly in most every song that he's a part of. I'm going to give you a, a quick example. A great song to, to see this in action is Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake, particularly in the pre and in the chorus. Okay, so I've got it pulled up here. What they're doing is they're going to introduce a lot of heavy, fast syncopation in the very beginning of the melody of the chorus. And then they end with these eighth notes, simple, down, down, down. And so there's this perfect balance between busy syncopation and simple down beats. Let me play it and you can hear it. Does that make sense? You're, you're super busy, Melody. 
super simplified. You've got this perfect contrast between the two, right? One is a very busy 16th note syncopated section, and the other is simple eighth note downbeats. Okay, that's the best example I think I could find for how well Max balances his melodies. Let's go to the pre-chorus and they're doing the same thing here. It's more of a, on a subtle level, but they're kind of reversing it. So what they're doing is they're starting with simple downbeats, down, down, and then they go to this busy section. So let me play it. Okay, so there's a lot happening, but simply put, what you have is you've got the da, da, and then you enter into this busy syncopated part where it's going down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 da, da, da. So every section is kind of balanced, simple, busy, simple, busy. And then to go even deeper, even in the rhythms of the melodies right there, notice this real fast when they're going down, 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 up, up, up. That's that's a perfect balance of three downbeats and three upbeats. Down, 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 up, up, up. And he's doing that over and over and over again in the pre-chord. I think he does it four times. So even on from a macro standpoint, he's perfectly balanced. From a micro standpoint, he's making sure that it's balanced as well. Okay? And that's another thing to focus on in your melodies. So when you're writing them, Step away and say, what would Max do? He's the greatest songwriter, greatest producer of all time, at least of our generation. What would Max do if he's trying to balance this? You got to look at it on a macro level and on a micro level. Simple as that. All right. So let's dive in to our next section. It's called New Music Friday. Okay. I'm going to go over two songs that just came out. They're hot off the press. Love these songs. Let me pull up. The first one is Kid Leroy, Too Much. Now there's a lot going on in all of these different hit songs, but I just want to pick out small portions of them to show you, okay, this is the technique that's being used. Probably is one of the most important techniques uh, in the song. So for Too Much by Kid Leroy, you've got two things happening. One is repetition. The repetition in the song is an AABB, you've got a quadruple A, and you've got a triple AB, right? In all these different sections. The lesson here is to repeat, repeat, repeat. Let's listen to, um, I think it's the pre. It's right here. Like a triple A B right there, right? So then let's go to the next section. So there, a quadruple A in that section, right? So there's a ton of repetition. I think in the chorus they're using an A A B B. I think. Um, but it's one thing I just want to point out very heavily is that hit songs are repeating the garbage out of their melodies. And I, I think I hear a lot of songwriters be like, well, I don't want to repeat too much. Or, you know, they, they, maybe they pull on the artistic card where they're like, well, I just want to write a song that that is meaningful or whatever. It's like, look, one of the easiest ways that you can create dopamine in the listener's brain is by repeating your strong motifs. Simple as that. Now, I'm not saying repeat all of them quadruple A, like exactly the same every time, even though that can work from time to time. In this song, it does. But these, these repetition phrase types where it's AABB or triple AB, you always want to be repeating your motifs, especially the first one. That was always part of Max's melodic math rules, right? You always want to take whatever melody you're repeating at the beginning and repeat it exactly the same again. The brain, I'll get into this in, in coming weeks with the science aspect, but the brain is always going to guess what's coming next like based on what they heard first. And if they can get it exactly the same, dopamine generally, most of the time, 99% of the time is going to be produced. Same studies from Peter Voost, the same musicologist. And so it's extremely important. Always repeat your first motif exactly the same, but then you can don't be afraid to keep repeating your motifs. Like it's essential. Have a strong motif and then repeat the heck out of it, okay? So that's too much. Uh, let's talk about the mirror pattern again um, in this song. So I've been talking about the mirror pattern on social media a lot, but this is the second aspect that I want to talk about this too much song by Kid Leroy. To kind of preface, I've talked about this a lot on social media, but his songs are using specific rhythm patterns in their songs over and over again. To go back on that down, up, up, down that Taylor used for Cruel Summer, yeah, by Usher. Down, up, up, down. That synth line at the beginning. Down, up, up, down. Down, up, 
up, down. Katy Perry's waking up in Vegas in the chorus. Uh, she goes, uh, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, and down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, up, down, and na, na. If you focus on the rhythm of these melodies, you'll notice that they're all using the same rhythm patterns and they're very specific rhythm patterns uh, over and over. And so one of these specific rhythm patterns that are always being reused by all these hit songs is the mirror pattern. Let me play it in the song and you'll get a visualization of it. And then I'll play or, or, or sing a couple of different other hit songs that are using the exact same mirror pattern that are hits right now. So let's go to Too Much. Um, I believe it's in the pre-chorus. I think I have it right here. Yeah, pre-chorus. So tell me what got in the way, right? So tell me down, up, 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 down. If you, if you grid that, it's a down, up, 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 down. Tell me down, up, 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 down. And he does it another three times, so four times total. Tell me down, up, up, up wait, I'll sing it with you here while we play the song. Down, up, 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 down. Down, up, 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 down. Down, up, 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 down. Down, up, down, up, 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 down. There we go. Butchered that last part, but you get the idea. Let me play one more time. Down, up, 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 down. There we go. All four sections are using this mirror pattern, right? They preface it with straight notes and then they go into this mirror pattern. And that's it, four times. So that's the mirror pattern being used in that song. Like I said, some other hit songs are using it. Dua Lipa's Dance the Night. The verse is, the, is where it's being used throughout the song, but the verse is the most prominent part of the song. So she's going, um, uh, baby, you can down, down, up, up, down, down. Down, down, up, up, down, down. And they go another phrase and up, dun, 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 down, down, up, up, down, down. And that that third phrase I just skipped over, that's almost a mirror pattern as well. It's another way you can do the mirror pattern. There's all these different ways that you can do it. So check out my social media for different ways that you can accomplish the mirror pattern. Another one is uh, Doja Cat, Paint the Town Red. Okay, hang on, I'm going to pull it up for you and we're going to play it. Down, 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 up, 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 down, down. Down, 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 up, 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 down, down. Down, 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 up, 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 down, down. Make sense? You just got one extra note at the beginning, but that's the same. Down, 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 up, 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 down, down. Same rhythm pattern that Dua Lipa is using. That's the mirror pattern. And it's it's a very powerful rhythm pattern that's being used in hits really heavily right now. One that you should be using as well. Oh, hang on. One more, one more hit song that's using the mirror pattern. Antihero by Taylor Swift. I'm the problem, it's me. That line in the chorus where goes, uh, she goes, I'm the problem, it's me. That rhythm there is down, down, up, up, down, down. And then everybody agrees. Down, down, up, up, down, down. I swear, this down, down, up, up, down, down is everywhere. Everyone's using it right now. It's super hot. All right, last song, I promise, okay? In the City. The main thing from In the City by Sam Smith, and there's somebody else on it. Oh, Charlie XCX. Okay. So the repetition phrase types in this as well. They're repeating the heck out of the song as well. They've got an ABAC, they've got an ABAB, and then they've got a triple AB with what we call micro repetition in the B phrase. It may sound complicated, but I'm going to play it for you. Okay. Um, I'm going to play the triple AB. Okay. Because I think this is the most powerful one that you can use. Let's do, I think it's the pre chorus. Let me play it. All right. Here's triple AB. All right, so quite simply, you're just repeating that A phrase three times, right? Uh, in the city, in the dark, three times. And then on that B phrase, it's pretty dang similar to the A phrase, but they're, they've changed it enough to where it's technically a triple AB. It's a very common technique in hit songs for these, for these repetition phrase types. But what they've done is they've repeated inside of that phrase. Again, I have a lot of reels teaching this, so definitely go to my Instagram or TikTok and check it out. But essentially what you're doing is you've got a B phrase that's different than these other three A phrases. And so in that B phrase, instead of doing a completely alternate motif, what you can do is you can take that motif in there and you can repeat it inside that phrase. Simple as that. And that's what they're doing here. But it also helps because they're taking the same lyrics and almost the same melodic information, just repeating it in a different way in that phrase. Triple AB is probably my favorite repetition phrase type. You'll see Max Martin use that more heavily than anything else. Some really huge artists he's worked with that, that use Triple AB are Ariana Grande, Ellie Goldeen, uh, The Weeknd, Can't, uh, Can't Feel My Face uh, in the verse. He's using Triple AB there. So many hit songs are using triple A B, especially Max. So if you want to just be lazy or if you just want to 
right in like the best repetition phrase type that I, I would consider it's the top one, then just write triple AB. Find a really strong motif and repeat it two more times and then get a B phrase in there that's different. And then boom, your section's written. So triple AB. Let's go into our next section. This is called the hit song technique of the week. There's hundreds of hit song techniques that I love to talk about and love to teach on. This one for this week is called continuous syncopation. It's one of those hundreds of hit song techniques, but I think it's one of the strongest that you can use. And we've heard it quite a bit in some of the hit song examples that we've listened to so far in this podcast. All right. What continuous syncopation is quite simply is you start with a downbeat and then you're going to syncopate immediately after that downbeat as many times as you want. Okay. So again, imagine the grid and imagine you've got a melody, but it's going to start on a downbeat. So you're going down and then you're going to go up, 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 as long as you want. You'll generally see most of the time between three to four notes of syncopation. So you'll generally see down, up, 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 up. But from time to time, and, and more often than not, you'll see these melody lines syncopate even further than three or four notes. Um, Can't Stop the Feeling was the one we went over earlier where you've got nothing I can see but you. I think it's seven or eight notes there. Down, up, 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 down. So you've got all these syncopated notes, one after the other. Very, very popular rhythm pattern to use. And I'm pretty sure that In the City has it as well. Yeah, definitely. It's only two notes. Down, up, up. This pre-chorus definitely has it. Check this out. Down, up, 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 up. Down, up, 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 up. So what is that? Down, up, 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 up. Is that four notes, right? So... Down, up, 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 up. Something I never thought of. Down, up, up. I'm gonna do it again here. Down, up, up. So you can have it either short, just two notes, or you can extend it to three or four, or can't stop the feeling. It has, I think, seven or eight notes after it. So those are just a few examples. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones where hit songs are using that. I'm pretty sure Blinding Lights is a huge one, right? So the synth line, I'll tell you what, we'll pull that up real quick and then we'll end this, se uh, this section. Down, 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 up, up, up. Three notes there. Down, up, up, up. Down, up, up, up. Down, up, 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 up. Right? That's a, intro is all about that. All right, it's in the pre-chorus right here. Ready? Down, up, 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 up. Down, up, 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 up. Down, up, 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 up. Down, up, up, up. Down, up, up, up. Right, and just repeating it. And you can note, did you hear the rhythmic repetition in that song as well? I'll let you grid that song and you can, you can see it yourself. But lots of continuous syncopation throughout that song. Just in the intro, the pre, and I believe right at the end of that chorus. Max Martin, boom. Rhythmic repetition and continuous syncopation in that song. Should be used. Definitely grid this song. Definitely grid this song. You'll see the rhythmic repetition being used. Oh, here's some more hit song examples. Sorry, guys. Can't Stop the Feeling course. We covered that. Blinding Lights. Pardon Me by Katy Perry. Those are short instances of continuous syncopation. As It Was by Harry Styles, that intro lick. It's another great one you can listen to. And then Beauty and a Beat, the melody in the chorus, I believe. Uh, I need is a beauty and a beat. Continuous syncopation, right? It can either be fast. We call it 16th note continuous syncopation, or it can be slower continuous syncopation using eighth notes like that song. You can notice, let me just real quick, a bonus for you. So you can do a uh, 16th note continuous syncopation, like can't stop the feeling where it's like down, up, 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 up. It's very fast compared to the the layout of the song, the measure, the time signature and the BPM of the song. But in Beauty and a Beat, it's slower. It's eighth notes uh, continuous syncopation. We're going to go, um, is a beauty and a Beat. The, the syncopation's slower, not because of the BPM, but because it's eighth note syncopation versus 16th note, like can't stop the feeling, okay? Something for you to practice on, right? So there's there's lots of ways you can do it, but those are the two main ways you can do continuous syncopation. Fast 16th notes or slow eighth notes, okay? All right, so for the last section, 
I want to just give, you know, from week to week, a few different reviews of people that have gone through the hit song system. And, you know, what you've kind of gotten in this in this podcast right in the past 30, 35 minutes is just a very small preview of what we teach on in the hit song system. Like I said, there's hundreds of hit song techniques that most songwriters don't know exist. They don't know how to use them in their own songs. They don't even know that they're there. A lot of songwriters are just going off of feel and hoping that they find inspiration and that whatever comes out of their mouth in front of that microphone is is good, or even with their productions. A lot of songwriters and producers don't have a goal to aim for, like dopamine, and they don't know how to get to that end goal of dopamine through these different hit song techniques or what we call the dopamine triggers. So what the hit song system is, is it is it takes all of this hit song information that's been unknown for years, decades. We've studied hit songs for the past 50 years, thousands of them, and we've encompassed all of this in this training called the hit song system. What I want to do is I want to read one quick review is from uh, James Bush, all right? And, and this is someone who went through the hit song system and gained enormous value from it, was able to 10X his songwriting, up his ability and his craft. So I'm going to read his review just real quick so you can get an idea of what it's like to go through the hit song system and, and, and learn from all of these different techniques. Um, and so the review is, what a deep dive into some of the best guarded secrets of the industry. I've been at this a long time and there are things in this course no one has shared. Some things I knew but didn't have a name for and just a great breakdown of some today's hits. Kudos to your team. You know, with the hit song system, it's not just another songwriting course. It's not even another course about hit songs. I've taken so many courses throughout the years. Uh, when I was trying to learn all of this and reverse engineer it, trying to find answers. And I, I'm telling you, no one else had the answers. All right. I had to go into this for over 10 years and reverse engineer all this stuff and study thousands of hit songs. And, and the hit song system is the end result of that reverse engineering all of these rhythm patterns, all these repetition phrase types, the pitch patterns, the polyrhythm techniques, the contrast and dynamics, the dopamine triggers, the production layout template, all of these different techniques that hit songs are relying on and using over and over again and the scientific studies and reasons why these techniques work on our human brains from an evolutionary standpoint, right? It's all packed into the hit song system. And so I just want to encourage you, if you want to take your song rank to the next level, the hit song system is it where you're going to learn all these hit song techniques and you're going to be able to have inspiration whenever you want. You're going to have solves for problems. Max Martin talks about that as well. He, said, he talks about where they, there is no secret formula writing hit songs. All they have is this huge toolbox where they have all of these different techniques that they can pull from to find inspiration, to find solves to their problems. And that's what the hit song system is. It takes all these techniques and it puts them right in your hands, puts them in your toolbox so you can be the one in the writer's room with all the answers. Everybody looks to you for answers where it's like, hey, what do we do next? We're stuck, what can we do? And you always have a solve. You always have a solution for the problems that you run into with writer's block or where it just seems like there's no right answer for a melody or production part or bass line or drum beat, whatever it is. The hit song system will help solve that for you, okay? All right. That's all I've got for this podcast for this week. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to read off the list here. Make sure to like, subscribe, email, and comment. And uh, if you want to email me, you can reach me at info at secretsofhitsongs.com. And you can click the link in my show notes down below um, to either ask a question, give me an email, or you can access the playlist with the songs that we talked about today. Um, and uh, also, you can find me everywhere on social media at Secrets of Hit songs. That's all I got for you guys. Be sure to practice your craft. Take all of these techniques, start to implement them in your songs and your melodies and your productions and keep working on your craft and uh, keep working towards becoming the songwriter and producer that you know you can be, that you've always dreamed that you can be as well. So I'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in.